Hello, this is another video talking about testing strategies for the ACS Organic Chemistry Final. For that series, this one will be on structure hybridization and aromaticity. So when you're looking at the Lewis structures for lowest energy, what you're going to be looking for are formal charges. Um, you want to figure out, um, try to minimize those. And if you have them, you want the negatives on the most electric negatives at them positives on the least electronegative atom. We're also important to want to have them close together, um, the charge separation. Um, if you have a positive and negative, you're going to want to be next to each other. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do is probably maximize the number of bonds, and as well as make sure that everything has uh, their octets filled. For that. So if you don't have the octet filled, then that's probably a good, good indicator that it doesn't have, um, that's probably that. So if you look at these, the first thing you do is probably check out to see what if any of these atoms don't have their octets filled. And so for here the CH3, that's fine. For 2, 4, 6, 8, that's fine. 2, 4, 6, 8, that's fine. 2, 4, 6. So this is probably going to be a, a big uh, red flag. So for this one, the carbon has it, right? or the nitrogen has it, the carbon has it. And again, this oxygen only has 6. Here, right? One, two, three, four. So we're okay there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four for the nitrogen. One, two, three, four for the carbon. So that's not so bad. Um, here it's one, two, three, four. Right? We got one, two, three, four, four for the carbon. One, two, three, four for the oxygen. So we can probably get rid of these because at least these two have the um, have all of their octets filled. Now, when we're dealing with um, you know, formal charges, Rex is probably going to be looking at formal charges. So with that, so remember with formal charge, it's going to be um, valence electrons minus electron mass. Right? So nitrogen, it has um, it has five valence electrons, but for here, right, it's going to have four from the um, from its lone pairs. Remember, we slice we slice the bonds so that one atom, uh, each atom gets one electron. So we're going to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And usually, what I'll do, um, if you notice, I'll put uh, dots on either side um, of, the, um, of the bond to indicate the two electrons. And then one of these electrons is going to go with nitrogen. In this case, one of them is going to go with the carbon. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, it's five minus six, so it's minus one. So, there's a minus one charge there. This carbon has one, two, three, four. It's right where it needs to be for the, for the oxygen. It's going to have three bonds, uh, three electrons from these three bonds. Um, one, two, three, four, five, right? So this normally has six valence electrons, now it has five. So it's going to be plus one. So you're going to have a plus one charge here. But notice how there's some, some quite a bit of charge separation, so that's not great. But here, right, so you got one, you have one, two, three, four, five on the nitrogen, so that's a zero. One, two, three, four, four, that's a zero. One, two, three, four, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a zero. Since there's no formal charges here, we're good. So for this one, it's, it's the uh, which Lewis structure is the phosphorus atom in a plus one formal charge state? So again, we're going to do um, valence electrons minus electrons mass. Right. So, so for this one, right, phosphorus uh, typically has five valence electrons right, because it's right below nitrogen. So for that, so for this one, right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this is five minus six, so it's minus one. For this one, one, two, three, four, five. Right, so five minus five, zero. One, two, three, four. Right, so five minus four, plus one. This might be this one. Now, if you want to do this one, right, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So 5 minus 7, so it's minus 2. So, there you go. so for this one, um, right, you know, um, the question is what is the hybridization of the ordinary containing the unshared red electrons in the phosphorus atom? So I found a phosphorus. You have to be a little careful for this to say, 
is it part of a um, are the electric um, part of long hair? Is it not? Um, things like that. So for this one, it's are part of should be part of an aromatic ring or not. In this case, they are not. Um, so by that, so you, all you really need to do is calculate hybridization. It's sort of a funky way of asking what's the hybridization of the, of the phosphorus. So remember, we're going to do lone pair sets uh, plus the uh, plus bond sets. So for bond sets, mean meaning that single, double, and triple bonds, um, those each of those would count as as a set. About that. So that's going to tell you how many letters you need. All right, so for here, we have one plus three, right? So we need four letters. So it's going to SPPP. Right? So SPPP, right? So SP3. So, that's a thing. so the, these long pairs are going to SP3. So for this one, what's the hybridization of the indicated atoms? So, about that. so again, we're going to talk about this long pair set and bond sets. But one of the things you're going to want to do is make sure whenever you're doing these hybridization um, points, be sure to draw any hydrogen in there because that's going to make um, a big difference on the uh, on being able to figure this out. So here for this for um, this carbon here, right, three bonds are shown, so there is a hydrogen. Same thing with here. There's one, two, three bonds shown, so there's a hydrogen. It's going to make things a little bit easier um, to be able to figure it out. So for um, Let's say A, right? So we have no lone pairs, but we have one, two, three bond sets. So this better be S SPP. We need three letters. One, two, three. So this SP2, so we can get rid of these two, right? Because it has to at least be this. And notice how th these are both SP2, so we don't even have to worry about that one. We just have to look at C. Right? So since it's one, two, three, four bond sets, right? It needs four letters, so it's SP. So there we go. So you don't necessarily, you didn't even have to figure out that hybridization. Right? It, was, you know, it wouldn't make a difference. Okay, so for heat to combustion, this is a, a classic uh, question on these things. You get a list like this and it's saying which one is the least stable. So what's happening is um, the more stable you are, when you burn it, the less energy you need to heat your bog. Right? So like that. So, so that means the least stable is going to be the most energy. You can sort of think about it as a bomb, right? You want to pack as much um, unstable stuff in there so when it goes, when it goes off, it, the, uh, um, you know, it gives off as much heat as possible. So, like that. so here, what you need to do, so if you're looking for least stable, you're looking for the most um, energy uh, when burned. So for here, you just go on this list, right? So, so the most, the most energy, uh, the least stable would be the highest number here. So, what would you do? If you had, if you're going to ask for the most stable, it would be this, this, um, this one here, the A, because it has the the lowest number. So for this one, which pair of electrons is this a resonant structure? So remember, with resonant structures. One of the big things is the uh, uh, atoms cannot move, only electrons. Okay, you can move pi electrons around, obviously you form a hydrogen, so they um, can move around, stuff like that. So, the, uh, um, so, you'll need to, so if you ever see anything where an atom changes, you're, you don't have to um, you know it's like that. So for here, notice how we go from an O to an OH. Nope, can't be it. So, like that. so for here you say, oh, well, you know, there's, um, there's a charge that moves. But in order for you to have a, a carbon um, with a positive charge, it really means they only have three bonds. So for this one, one bond is shown. So this is a CH2. Here, three bonds are shown. So now it's a CH, with this one being a CH3, because right? only one bond is shown. So you've gone from a CH2 to a CH3. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, this is a CH. And it goes from the three bonds to this. So go from a CH2 to a CH3. Can't do it. So for here, the uh, this is actually the same molecule as what um, so it's not this. So you didn't have to do this to know. Yep, this is this is going to be it. 
But again, none of the atoms have moved. It's just been electrons. And you, know, you go from um, nothing to, you know, neutral, no formal charges to, to positives, but that's okay. Um, so, so. Okay, so which of the following atoms are classified as being aromatic? Okay, so you're going to want to look for um, one. It has to be in a ring. Um, that, but the, uh, all of the atoms have to satisfy one of the one of these three things. Like you either need to have a lone, set of lone pairs, you either need to have a charge, or they uh, need to be part of um, part of a pi bond. Okay, so carbon carbon double bond, carbon oxygen double bond, carbon carbon triple bond, whatever. There are some exceptions to this. The quaternary nitrogen uh, that has a charge, but it's not going to be part of. Um, everybody is ready for the uh, um, until the next. It's going to be part of the uh, because it's an sp3. Um, it's not part of this, so we have to be wary about that. So, first thing to do is make sure that one, it's in a ring. Two, everything satisfies this. So you come in here, say, okay, pi bond charge, right? All the carbon atoms, all the carbon atoms here. Um, pi 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 charge delivered here. So pi pi pi. Um, this one here, right, this one has a, uh, um, that? so it's a CH2, it doesn't satisfy this one, so it can't be this one, but here we've got pi pi lone pairs, so we can at least narrow that, that down, okay, so for here, now we need to think about the Huffle numbers, okay, so if you look at the um, aromatic versus anti, so they're going to go bounce back and forth. Um, so but that so but we know that six six um, pi electrons is that's benzene that's the classic aromatic right so that so it's going to bounce back and forth from that right so we have six to eight to ten to twelve to you know, fourteen and so on but it also goes back so four um, and two so but that so if you have this amount of uh, electrons in the ring you can put that in the ring it's going to be aromatic. Um, can't, then it's going to be anti. So, so for here, right? So, that, so we have two pi electrons right, right here. This one has a charge, so it satisfies that. So, so two is aromatic, so this is going to be aromatic. Here we have two, four, six, right? Two, four, six, six. Okay. And we have a charge here, so we're, we're good. So this one here, this is one of those cases where you have to be uh, a little bit careful because you're going to say two, four, six, eight, right? Um, it's going to be anti, but the uh, um, what you want to do is what the molecule does is because there is such an incentive for um, the molecule to be aromatic. What it actually does is it takes one of these sets of long pairs and puts it orthogonal, so 90 degrees out of the plane. So it's almost hiding it. So for here, what you're going to do is you're going to say it's only going to put one set of long pairs in here. So there'll be two, four, six. Um, but that, and so it sort of hides one of those lone pairs, so um, this one would also be aromatic, so your answer would be anti. One of the exceptions that comes up a lot would be something like this. Um, in this case, the nitrogen can't move those electrons out of the plane, because if it did, then it would um, the, uh, you wouldn't have um, the electrons the, uh, um, going around stuff like that. So as the electrons would go around, it would hit here and stop. It would be similar to this case here. So you actually have to count two, four, six, eight. So this would be anti. So this is the classic one where it's not um, you have high electron or lone pairs on a heterocyclic ring. That's not that's not aromatic. Usually, if you have an aromatic ring um, with heterocy heterocyclic aromatic, nine times out of ten, it's gonna be aromatic. So when in doubt, 